two different cases of genioplasty without jaw surgery that are very different. If we look at case one on the left, the lips and the dentate segment of the jaws are actually quite well positioned. If we look at her overall cranial structure, we look at the ear location, we look at the forehead, we look at the nasal position and the lips, they're actually in good position. 90 to 95 percent of her deficiency is at the chin. So offering a patient like this jaw surgery as well as genioplasty doesn't do them much of a service. They're better suited for an isolated genoplasty with some soft tissue enhancement to decrease the roundness of the face. What lends itself to a favorable result for her is a couple of things. One, if you look at her labial mental fold, she actually has quite a flat fold. So she goes from lower lip straight down to chin and then almost straight down to neck. So there's really a lack of the angles and folds in this area that lend itself to respond very well from isolated genioplasty. Additionally, we were able to increase the sharpness of her jawline by decreasing some of the fatty tissue under the neck and in the buccal fat pads. So if we look at case two, now this is a very different patient. And this is a patient that I would encourage to have jaw surgery in addition to genioplasty. Because even though they have a really very beautiful upper third, great nasal support, we could see in the lower third of the face, the lips start to fall back, particularly the lower lip, and you start to lose support of the lower lip with an overly deep labial mental fold. Doing an isolated genioplasty in a case like this can be very challenging. To get A, a meaningful movement in the chin without it looking unnatural, and B, to control all the little folds and angles. This patient declined jaw surgery and wanted to achieve the best results she can get with an isolated genioplasty, and this is where we got her. We were able to control the labial mental fold, and we were able to give her a very meaningful projection of the chin. To achieve a natural looking result with just the genioplasty in this case, we had to use some creative techniques. We lengthened the chin. Now lengthening the chin allows us to open that fold up so we can go forward a little bit more on the chin. The second thing we did is we tipped the front of the chin down. By doing that, that rotational movement, it allows us to control the labial mental fold as well. And we're able to move the chin forward more than we otherwise would without distorting the labial fold or making it too deep. And then lastly is how we designed the chin bone osteotomy. The way you design the chin bone cut is going to influence the shape of the chin and the geometry of that bone cut will reveal itself in different ways depending on where you position it. Here we have two very different cases where we took very different approaches but both beautiful results.